Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I have some supernatural recommendations for the Halloween season. First off, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who voted in the poll I put up recently, asking which theme you would prefer to see for my Halloween recommendations, and Supernatural was the winner. And I know Supernatural can be a pretty broad term, covering ghosts, vampires, witches, demons, etc. Um, personally, ghosts are the first thing I think of when I think of Supernatural, so that is what I'm focusing on in this video. We have ghosts, we have haunted houses, uh, some of them might be a little more unexplained than specifically ghosts, they might be more of an evil entity of some sort, but these all fit in pretty well with the haunted house, ghost, haunting of some sort type of theme. I have 10 spooky books and 10 spooky films for you. These are all books that I have read, films that I have watched. I really enjoyed them all and would definitely recommend them. And I think for the official spooky season of the year, ghost stories are perfect because yeah, Halloween is the time of year when the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. And before I get into my recommendations, I hope you don't mind me not putting any makeup on for this video. I just figured I was really, you know, excited to make the video, so I just kind of rolled out of bed and we're gonna do this. Okay, let's start off with the books and I'm gonna go in order of publication date. So from 1977, we have, sorry for the mad glare there, we have Sweetheart Sweetheart by Bernard Taylor. You've probably heard me mention this author before, I'm a big fan of his work. This was actually the first book of his I read and I loved it. This is about twin brothers, one of them is living in a beautiful little cottage in the English countryside and our main character, the other brother, goes to visit him and yeah, finds that there's something going on in this house, not everything is quite as it seems. And just to read you a little snippet of the inside, it says, gradually David was drawn into an unholy nightmare of ghostly mystery, murder, and sexual possession. So yeah, if you're looking for a quiet, slow burn with some genuine spookiness, this one has that, yeah, small British village atmosphere and yeah the story itself was really unique and I just yeah loved it so would definitely recommend it. Next up from 1978 is The House Next Door by Anne Rivers Siddons. This one's interesting because it's mostly told not from the perspective of the house in question but from the couple that live next door. So they live next door to an empty lot of land, which at some point someone comes in deciding to build a house on there. But terrible things happen in this new house and it's yet yeah, one bad creepy thing after another. And this starts to affect, yeah, these neighbors and the other people in the neighborhood. This was another one that I loved and would definitely recommend. It's another yeah, slow burn, but lots of atmosphere and tension and yeah, creepy things going on in this house. Next up from 1983 is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is probably the most well-known one on this list. I tried to otherwise keep it to, yeah, some lesser known or underrated picks, uh, but this one is such a classic, um, but yeah, definitely not as well known as things like The Shining by Stephen King. So I definitely still wanted to mention it here. And this is another one set in the UK. It is set on the coast where there is a lot of marshland. This one is more of your classic Victorian ghost story, but it is a bit more accessible in the writing style because it did come out in the 80s. So if you like that kind of idea, but you struggle with older writing, then this one would be a good one for you to try. And this one is following a solicitor who has to travel to this small village on the coast in order to deal with things after a woman has died. Uh, this woman was very reclusive and she lived in a house that was quite remote and only accessible at low tide. And the solicitor has to spend some time in this house and yeah, some seriously creepy things happen and he starts to see this woman in black 
in various places. This one is a classic for a reason and it's a pretty short read as well. So if, yeah, if you're looking for just a quick, absorbing, supernatural read, then this one is an excellent one. Next up from 1988 is The Graveyard Apartment by Mariko Koike. And this one, as you can probably guess from the title, is set in an apartment rather than, you know, the spooky lone haunted house. This one is about a family who are looking for a new place to live but their budget is pretty tight and the only place that ticks all of their boxes is this one particular apartment um, but the problem is it's located right next to a graveyard and unfortunately they don't have any other options other than to move into it and there aren't many other people living in the building as well as them so it already has a bit of a spooky and isolated feeling and yeah once they move in there are some strange things that happen and yeah this one has some unique ways in which the haunting occurs which I really enjoyed and I will say this one doesn't have the greatest reviews but I personally thought it was excellent and yeah I feel like more people should give it a chance so I definitely recommend this one. Next up also from 1988 is Haunted by James Herbert. This is another British one. We do love our ghost stories. And this one is about a psychic investigator who is brought in by a wealthy and eccentric family who live in this big old house to investigate some strange happenings that have been going on in their home. This one is really atmospheric and creepy and definitely has that yeah dreary British countryside kind of vibe and this yeah old spooky house and as he's trying to uncover what is going on in the house he's also learning a bit more about this family and their history. I read this one I think it was last year and it ended up being one of my favourites of the year so I definitely recommend it. From 1991 we have Naomi's Room by Jonathan Aycliffe. This is about a couple who have a young daughter and one year while they're out Christmas shopping she goes missing and unfortunately turns up dead. And we're following the husband here as he is dealing with the grieving process and he starts to believe that the ghost of his daughter is haunting him and he yeah, starts to investigate what could be happening here and starts to uncover some things that have happened in the past and yeah this one I don't want to say too much more about but I will say it does go to a place <laughs> that you might not expect from the beginning. From 1995 we have another book called Haunted, this one is by Tamara Thorne and out of the list of books I have here, this is probably the most fun one. Um, while it does have its atmosphere and spookiness, it's also, yeah, a bit more of a romp. And this one is about a writer who moves into a supposedly haunted house in order to get inspiration for his next book. And one of the unique elements about this particular house is that it used to be a brothel and there was a massacre there many years ago. Uh, which is why it might be haunted and this one does have some ghost sex so if you're looking for that kind of thing then give this one a go. This one also has some voodoo related things going on related to a certain character uh, that was yeah back in the brothel days of the house and yeah as the author uncovers more about exactly what happened yeah of course some Creepy things go on and yeah this was just a, a really entertaining time. Next up from 2003 is The Good House by Tana Nareev Dew. This is about a woman who inherits her grandmother's house and moves in there um, unfortunately to be followed by a family tragedy and she is yeah trying to deal with this and also yeah dealing with moving back into a home that she had spent a lot of time in during her childhood and uncovering things about her grandmother and her family that she did not know about. So this one has that yeah, generational element and the story is told in kind of back and forth over different periods of time so we yeah we learn exactly what happened and how that impacts 
the present day and as well as it being a haunted house story there are also elements of voodoo, witchcraft, that type of thing. This one is kind of a big one but I absolutely flew through it. It was such a compelling read and I thought it was really excellent. From 2015 is Within These Walls by Anya Alborn. This is about uh, another author who moves into a house which is notoriously the location where there was a cult mass murder that took place and the reason he moves in here is because he is looking for his next big break book-wise and he is contacted by the cult leader himself who is currently in jail. Uh, he says that if he moves in to this house he will reveal everything that happened that he has been keeping secret all this time. So yeah, needing his next big break the author moves in and of course some creepy things happen and this one also has that back and forth over different time periods so we learn a bit more as we go on about what led up to this mass murder and there are also like snippets of newspaper articles and police reports and that kind of thing thrown in so it has that kind of true crime aspect or you know fictional true crime element going on as well which I thought worked really well. I yeah really enjoyed this one and would definitely recommend it. And last but not least for the books from 2021 is Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. Probably the most unique one on the list in regards to the haunted house element. This one is following some characters who yeah went into this particular house and something happened in there and they are now dealing with the trauma of it. One of the characters is trans so we are also dealing with their experience in being trans, specifically within the British political climate of the day. This is also maybe the darkest one on the list. It does go to yeah some pretty dark places uh, content wise and deals with some you know raw topics and just to read a little snippet from the back it says it confronts both supernatural and real world terrors as it examines the devastating effects of trauma and the way fascism makes us destroy ourselves and each other. Okay so those are my 10 spooky book recommendations and I also have 10 spooky film recommendations for you because why the hell not? So again just going in order of their original release date. First up is House from 1977 directed by Nobuhiko Abayashi. This is definitely one of the more wacky ones on this list. Uh, funnily enough putting them in release date order the first few are definitely more the fun wacky end of haunted houses and then it moves into the more serious and creepy and emotional type of haunted houses. Um, so yeah this one is about a group of friends who are visiting one of their grandmother's home and it's just pure wackiness and amazingness and it's so unique, it's incredible. Um, this is one that I'd been meaning to watch for years um, but there was always that you know cult hype about it so I kind of put it off because I felt like it was never going to live up to the expectations I had for it. But when I finally got around to watching it, it did not disappoint, it totally blew me away. The style and the visuals and the effects are all just absolutely brilliant and yeah if you're just looking for a fun and unique and wacky haunted house then this has my highest recommendation. Moving on to 1987 we have Blood Sisters directed by Roberta Findlay and if you haven't watched any Roberta Findlay horror films then you're missing out. Uh, I believe she started off uh, directing adult films and then in the 80s moved into some horror and exploitation films. So yeah pretty interesting career there and Blood Sisters is a little bit like Haunted by Tamara Thorne. It involves a house that used to be a brothel <laughs> so they could make a good pairing. In this one we're following a group of girls who are going to be spending the night in this particular house as part of an initiation and yeah while they are there they experience some strange goings on and yeah this one is definitely low budget and a bit schlocky which for me is part of the charm um, but I thought it had some yeah great visuals and style and was just a good entertaining time. 
from 1988. We have High Spirits, directed by Neil Jordan. This is one of my childhood favourites and I did rewatch it for Old School April this year and had a ton of fun with it. This is about the castle in Ireland that is failing financially and they decide that in order to make money they will pretend the place is haunted and like that will bring in more customers. And so yeah, we have a variety of people coming in to stay and um, it turns out the place is actually haunted though, <laughs> so that's super fun. And one of these ghosts, Daryl Hannah, and one of the living people, Steve Guttenberg, fall in love and yeah, they have to figure out a way of actually being together. So this is more of a romantic comedy, I guess, but yeah, supernatural as well, and some spooky scenes too, and yeah, those nuns creeped me the hell out as a kid. Like, they still creep me out today, actually. <laughs> From 1989 is Sweet Home, directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. A couple of his more famous ones are Cure and Pulse, which I would also recommend, uh, but this is a bit of a lesser known one of his, and definitely in quite a different vein <laughs> to those two. This one is, yeah, pretty crazy, and um, it also had a video game that came out um, based on the same story, which is a uh, yeah, group of people uh, going into this abandoned house in order to uh, make a documentary about the painter who used to live there and of course craziness and creepiness ensue so hopefully that tells you whether it might be something you want to see or not but this was just a lot of fun yeah great visuals and effects and just such a good time next up is ghost watch from 1992 and this one maybe straddles the line between fun and serious. Um, this was presented as a real live show on TV and I watched it as it aired originally as a kid and it scared the bejesus out of me and it still does quite honestly. It was basically following a live TV crew uh, going into the home of this family in order to investigate some supernatural goings on that had been happening there and it takes place on Halloween night of course so yeah perfect for the spooky season. This one was really ahead of its time in that kind of found footage uh, you know faux documentary uh, subgenre and I think it holds up extremely well today. I absolutely love it and um, has some genuinely creepy moments which, uh, yeah, just make me shiver just to think about them. So yeah, if you haven't seen this one, I highly recommend it. From 2001 is Session 9, directed by Brad Anderson. This is about a group of asbestos removal workers who are working in this old abandoned building which used to be an insane asylum and as they are all working within the building they experience some strange goings on. I haven't seen this for a few years but it's actually on my list for October this year to re-watch it uh, but my memory of it was that it was excellent and that it was genuinely creepy and I remember really enjoying it so I'm very much looking forward to revisiting this. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's a bit more low budget, um, but I think the actors are all really good in it. And yeah, it really has this, yeah, quite sinister um, and effectively creepy vibe to it. So definitely recommend. From 2007, we have The Orphanage, directed by J.A. Bayona. This one is about a couple and their young son who move into a building that used to be an orphanage. They intend to renovate the place and reopen it as an orphanage and as they are busy working on the place their son starts to interact with a new friend of his that lives in the place and might be a ghost. <laughs> so yeah this one is also super creepy, it's very atmospheric, um, it also has an emotional element to the story. This is one that I saw at Fright Fest in London years ago, um, so before it had been, you know, generally released. Um, so I just watched it because I thought the premise sounded interesting and yeah, wow, it really blew me away. I thought it was fantastic and uh, yeah, it's definitely one that I have enjoyed re-watching. So if you have not seen it, I would recommend you do so. 
from 2003 is A Tale of Two Sisters, directed by Kim Ji Woon. This is about yeah, two sisters who live in this house with their father and a kind of evil stepmother character and one of the sisters has been away at a mental institution. She returns to the family home and yeah is dealing with a haunting within the home and also the tensions between the members of the family. This one is absolutely stunning, visually beautiful and also yeah some great atmosphere and mystery and genuinely creepy moments that scared the pants off me. From 2016 is Under the Shadow directed by Babak Anvari. This is another one set in an apartment building rather than you know your classic lonely haunted house and it's following a mother and her daughter and it's during the Iran-Iraq war and there's a missile that lands in their apartment building and in the aftermath there are some strange things that happen that they feel like there might be some kind of supernatural force now in the building. This is another really underrated one that I thought was excellent and more people should check out. It has that unique element of the backdrop of war along with the atmosphere and creepy goings on of a haunted house story. So yeah, definitely recommend this one if you haven't seen it. And last but not least from 2020 is His House directed by Remy Weeks. This is following a couple who are refugees from South Sudan and are now in the UK and they start to experience some strange things happen in the place that they have been given to live in. So this is another one that has that backdrop of war but used within the classic haunted house story um, in order to yeah, explore the trauma that these people are having to deal with, not only from what they experienced in their past but also the environment that they are now living in. This one as you might imagine also has an emotional element to the story along with the creepiness and yeah I just thought it worked really well. An excellent watch. So that is my list. They are my haunted house recommendations for the spooky season or any time of year obviously but I do feel like yeah October and the run up to Halloween is the perfect time of year for a good ghost story. If you check out any of these books or films I really hope you enjoy them. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Happy Halloween!